So today I want to look at this DS3218 servo. Mine's the Pro version. They also have just the MG version. The MG version I think has brass and aluminum gears. The Pro version is supposed to have steel gears. We'll take a look at that. So this comes in a bunch of different brands. Mine was Animos brand. I got it off of Amazon. I think it was $23, which is not a lot of money. The Amazon listing says it's 21 or 23 kilograms, centi sorry, kilogram centimeters. This says it's 20 kilogram centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and believe what's written on the, uh, on the servo here. So that, that's pretty powerful. It's also stated to be pretty fast. It has an aluminum body, which may or may not be advantageous. Plastic top and bottom caps. I can see the output is definitely metal. Comes with a little uh, aluminum servo horn here, which appears to be pretty decent condition. I'm going to be putting this in my Rustler 4x4. Uh, it's, it's got the stock Traxxas servo in it, which I assume isn't going to last very long based on my experience with previous Traxxas servos, but this is supposed to be waterproof. What I'd like to do before I install it and test it out is I want to take it apart and see how the gears look, kind of see how it looks inside, make sure it, it does appear to be waterproof. First thing I'm going to look at here is where the wires go in. From the outside here, these wires are plenty long enough, too long really, I'm probably going to shorten them up. From the outside here, this little strain relief doesn't appear to have any waterproofing. It may be waterproofed on the inside, we'll take a look at that. So let's go ahead and, and whip these four screws out of the bottom here, and we'll see how it looks inside. Okay, so I see if right off the bat here we've got little O-rings on the bottoms of each one of the, or on that, uh, underneath the heads of each one of the screws. A little recess for the O-ring. That should effectively waterproof where the screws go in. These are just little self-tappers here. Alright, let's take this bottom cover off. Alright, got a nice beefy brushed motor in there. Okay, so right off the bat here, I'm seeing that the strain relief for these wires, yeah, okay, so this right here is not going to be waterproof. Maybe water resistant, but it's not going to be waterproof. This strain relief has no provision for pre completely preventing water ingress. It's, it's snug on here, but it doesn't get particularly clamped down when this goes on. So first step I'm going to do when I put this back together is I'm going to put some silicon on here and slide this over the silicon and that will seal this part up here. They do have a o-ring going around the bottom here so that's that's a good make should make a good seal. Let's take a quick look at the electronics board. Looks fine. I don't see any crazy crustiness or anything like that. It looks pretty typical for a, a servo board. We've got the potentiometer hidden down in there. I'm not really going to dig into this any further. There's not really much to see in here. This board is just kind of stuffed in here, which is fine, I guess. So let's put the bottom back on and we'll take the top off. And all right, we've got this nice amount of grease in here. It said it was dual ball bearing. I see one ball bearing there. And no seal in the top, so... Okay, so this is not going to be waterproof. There's no way that, without having a seal up here at the top, it, it's not going to be waterproof in, in any way. And there's no good way to, to fix that problem. Uh, you can pack this full of grease. That may help, but you're not going to correct the issue, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a disappointment. Let's take a look at these gears. Okay, these do appear to be steel. Let me grab a magnet real quick. Okay, yep, got steel gear here. Magnet's not the strongest thing in the world, but that's steel. Steel. Actually, that feels like it might be aluminum. Can't pull that off there. Let me grab a stronger magnet. All right, well, we got it installed. I went ahead and pulled, I don't know, maybe 10 inches, 8 inches out of the 
servo wire. It's not really necessary, but it makes it a lot neater in the installation. Everything went fine with the install. I was not able to use the aluminum servo arm that came with it because it was just too long. So we've got it in here and let's see how, how this thing feels. All right, well, it's definitely louder than the stock servo, which I'm not surprised about because this has plastic gears and this has metal gears. It's a little bit faster. I wouldn't say it's crazy faster power-wise. It's pretty darn powerful. I mean, obviously the servo saver in there is is, uh, is flexing, but I think overall it's going to be pretty good. All right, well, the servo's back out of the truck. Let me tell you why. When I had the Traxxas Stability Management turned off, their gyro built into the receiver, everything worked fine. As soon as I turned it on, I started getting all kinds of weird results. I had done some research before buying this to check for compatibility with the TSM, and basically the, the general consensus is as long as it's a digital servo, it'll probably work fine. Well, digital servo. So I started looking at it a little bit closer, and I don't think this is a digital servo. It doesn't have that classic, you know, whine when you when it's on and you put pressure on the arm. It doesn't have that that immediate kind of chattery whine sound. It it feels like an analog servo. So I don't want to just guess on this because I don't want to blame this thing or accuse this thing of lying to our faces, digital servo, without being sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the oscilloscope take this thing back apart, we're going to hook up the oscilloscope to the motor, put power to this, and actually see if this is a digital or analog uh, servo. I also want to just real quick show you how a digital servo is supposed to behave. So, when I, I don't know if you can hear it over the noise of the fans of the RC car, but when I push on this, I get immediate resistance on it, and you can hear the pulse width modulation of the, the motor inside the servo. It's kind of a grumbling, whining noise. And there's almost no dead band in here at all. So let me go ahead and hook up the other servo. The other servo. And I get none of that characteristic whining noise. And I get a nice bit of dead band here when I'm trying to move this back and forth. And I'm not getting any of the characteristic digital servo whining noise. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up back up to the oscilloscope and show you what I get as far as the, uh, the trace is concerned. Which is kind of weird to me. But whatever they're doing, this is not a typical what you'd expect from a digital servo. So here's what I'm getting with this other servo. It's a, I'm getting a 16 kilohertz signal, um, which doesn't really make sense to me. I, I look, try to look it up online, trying to figure out why, but whatever they're doing in this servo is not following what a standard digital servo setup is supposed to be, which is almost certainly why the Traxxas stability management isn't working and it doesn't behave like a digital servo. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that for all intents and purposes, this is not a digital servo. So what have we learned about this servo? Well, initially, of course, found that it wasn't actually waterproof. Didn't really like the way that this board just sort of flapping around in here. Then upon installing it, found that it wasn't working properly with the Traxxas Stability Management. A little bit more research. It's not behaving like a digital servo should. I'm not sure what the manufacturer's implementation is on the pulse width modulation going to the motor. Also, I'm not that good with an oscilloscope, so I may have just missed the actual pulses and I was looking at something totally different. I don't think the 16 kilohertz signal I was looking at was valid anyway. But by the way it feels and the way it sounds, the end result is this is not behaving like a digital servo. So essentially, this is basically a junk. I mean, if you want a, an analog servo that's cheap and you're not, you don't care about it being waterproof and you don't mind the fact that the build quality isn't all that great. Oh, also they say that in the ad that it's got stainless steel gears, only the output ge gear is stainless, the rest of them are regular steel. So that's not exactly honest either. So. If you're looking for a cheap servo that is analog and isn't waterproof but has metal gears and a decent amount of speed, then okay, you go with the DS3218. If you're looking for a manufacturer that's honest about their specifications, you might want to look somewhere else.